Our last Hulk Hogan video on the channel looked at Hulk's journey from WrestleMania 3 to WrestleMania 4. Hogan had lost the WWF Championship to Andre the Giant at the very first WWF main event show, leading to Andre presenting the title to Ted DiBiase as the million dollar man had bought Andre's services. The WWF title was vacated and a tournament was held to crown a new champion at WrestleMania 4 and after the event, Hulk Hogan was no longer at the top of the mountain. Macho Man Randy Savage won his very first WWF title when he defeated Ted DiBiase in the tournament finals, bringing in what should have been a new era for the WWF Championship. While Randy Savage was very deserving of the title and fans across the world celebrated when Randy lifted both the WWF title and Miss Elizabeth in the air to end WrestleMania 4, the plan here all along was to actually build a new opponent for Hulk Hogan. The WWF would craft a story about friendship, jealousy and betrayal, a story that is still fondly remembered today and a story that we will cover from top to bottom in today's video. So let's go back in time and look at the madness meeting the mania, the rise of one of WWF's most star studded tag teams and the eventual fallout between the Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan when the mega powers would explode. A brief recap of the last Hogan video is necessary here to gain a complete picture of the Mega Powers story. Saturday night's main event, October 3rd, 1987, Macho Man Randy Savage vs The Honky Tonk Man. You need to understand that Randy Savage had been booked as a heel up to this point, though a slow babyface turn was in the works. The Macho Man, even as a bad guy, was getting cheers from wrestling audiences. Fans had an underlying respect for Randy Savage, he kinda transcended what the WWF wanted him to be through his entertaining promos and his matches inside the ring. So the decision was ultimately made to turn the guy into a complete babyface and capitalise on the audience's reactions he and Miss Elizabeth had been receiving. So at this Saturday night's main event show, when the Hunky Tonk Man and the Heart Foundation were about to lay a beating into Savage after pushing Miss Elizabeth down to the mat, Savage's valet went backstage to seek help from the immortal Hulk Hogan. Hogan came to the ring, he helped the Macho Man, the two shook hands in dramatic fashion and Randy Savage's babyface turn was complete. The two men were interviewed after the match and Randy Savage called the duo the Mega Powers for the very first time. It was an extremely fitting name, Savage had been a standout intercontinental champion and Hogan was Hogan, the biggest star in the World Wrestling Federation. So you really did have a mega powerful force to contend with here and in the 80s young WWF fans just couldn't get enough of this pairing of two of their most beloved superstars. Little did we all know that the formation of the Mega Powers was going to lead to an eventual big money match between our two heroes, but two things to take away here. Firstly, it was really Miss Elizabeth who brought the Mega Powers together, she was the catalyst, and secondly, man, our TV screens struggled to handle such star power when Hogan and Savage were together cutting promos. It was on another level. Right, let's do some digging. The very first match we have for the Mega Powers was in Vancouver, a house show in November of 1987. The Mega Powers team up with Jim Duggan to take on King Harley Race, Rick Rude and King Kong Bundy. A big match for sure, but to my knowledge there doesn't seem to be any recordings of this bout available, at least online today. The next time the Mega Powers would team up was in January of 1988. The Mega Powers vs the Hunky Tonk Man and the Heart Foundation in a 3 on 2 match and again, it seems like this match too hasn't been recorded and if it has, it hasn't seen the light of day. Hogan and Savage also teamed with Ricky Steamboat to take on the Hunky Tonk Man and the Heart Foundation in Montreal on February 8th, 1988, but you guessed it, no recordings have been made available. These three matches, legitimately, are the only three matches the Mega Powers had together before WrestleMania 4. As a matter of fact, the Mega Powers only teamed up a grand total of eight times during this era of the WWF, which is incredible when you think about it. The WWF were able to tell a story of a tag team exploding when, in reality, the tag team didn't really team up all that often, especially on TV. When it came to television and pay-per-view matches, the Mega Powers worked together only three times, SummerSlam 88, Survivor Series 88 and the second main event show. The Mega Powers actually teamed up way more frequently in World Championship Wrestling, but what the WWF creative team were trying to do here was prop up Randy Savage. When he got the rub from Hulk Hogan, there would be no stopping the macho madness in his quest to become the WWF Champion. Hulk Hogan would still be around of course while Savage was on top, Hogan wasn't going to just sit around all day watching movies and playing his Game Boy. 
Look at that, brother. Get to pick your own stage. Get to call your own shots, man. A lot of political booking, dude. I like it already, brother. No, no. Hulk may have had a few external projects to work on, such as the No Holds Barred movie, but when the time was right, Macho Man's position as a fan favourite would be tested when he came face to face with Hulk Hogan himself. The whole Mega Powers angle would ultimately lead to another opponent for Hogan to face, but to be fair, this is really how superstars should be made. Someone gets brought to the next level thanks to their association with the top guy, the two have a match, and in theory the WWF should be left with another main eventer on their hands. Don't get me wrong either, Randy Savage was already more than capable of being the man, he didn't necessarily need Hulk Hogan, but Hogan's extremely prominent position on the WWF cards did lend itself to Savage's rise within the World Wrestling Federation. It was like the cherry on top. It's easy to forget that Randy Savage actually wrestled Ted DiBiase on TV just two weeks before their WrestleMania 4 main event. DiBiase vs Savage happened on the March 12th 1988 episode of Saturday Night's main event and after Randy Savage lost via countout caused by Andre the Giant's interference, DiBiase, Virgil and Andre led a beating into Savage. Just like before, Miss Elizabeth ran to the back and she found Hulk Hogan. Hogan saved Savage once again from a 3 on 1 beatdown, so yeah, Hulk was kinda positioned as Randy Savage's saviour for a little while, kind of proving here that it was still all about the Hulkster. Anyway, WrestleMania 4 happened, Savage wins the WWF Championship with the help of Hulk Hogan. Hogan sticks around for the celebration at the end which many fans see as Hogan stealing the limelight and maybe rightfully so. Randy Savage may have been the champion but from WrestleMania 4 onwards the company was still seemingly all based around Hogan. This of course is nothing new in modern wrestling. There's a consistent trend of the WWE's champions not being the number one guys in the company but still, back during this time period, the guy who holds the title should have been seen as the face of the company, in my opinion anyway. Savage realised that it was still all about Hulk and slowly there was a little animosity building between Savage and Hogan backstage. The two men were reportedly still friendly with each other but they certainly weren't best buds who hung around together. And then there was Miss Elizabeth, Randy Savage's wife at the time. It's been well documented that Randy Savage was overly protective of Elizabeth, he would keep her away from the boys in the locker room and Hulk Hogan was no exception. Most of the stories we hear about Randy Savage backstage during this time period somehow always involved Elizabeth and a story Hulk Hogan shared on the Stone Cold podcast really goes a long way in highlighting how protective the macho man could be. When the mega powers were in full swing, Miss Elizabeth would also escort Hulk Hogan to the ring for singles matches, acting as a manager to both Savage and the Hulkster, and when Hulk grabbed Elizabeth to bring her into the ring during a house show in Paris, well, Randy Savage got so mad that both he and Hulk got physical backstage. There were apparently no ring steps set up beside the ring, so Hogan had to grab Elizabeth to put her inside the squared circle, and the macho man thought that Hogan had copped a feel when he lifted Miss Elizabeth. The two men had a scuffle backstage, but Hulk was eventually able to calm Savage down. Keep this all in mind though, the Mega Powers feud was centred around Miss Elizabeth and Randy Savage's jealousy, art imitating life. At SummerSlam 1988, the inaugural SummerSlam pay-per-view, the Mega Powers took on the Mega Bucks, Ted DiBiase and Andre the Giant. In the eyes of young fans, this was the ultimate battle between good and evil, and the Mega Powers would provide a feel-good moment for fans around the world when they toppled the Mega Bucks in the main event. The secret weapon of the Mega Powers, Miss Elizabeth, helped turn things around for Savage and Hogan when she revealed a little skin, distracting the villains long enough for Savage and Hogan to make an attack and end the match with the victory. The seeds though were already beginning to get planted for the eventual Hogan vs Savage match at WrestleMania. Savage didn't look too happy with Hogan celebrating so much with Miss Elizabeth. It was all very subtle at this point but it was still done extremely well. You could tell that the macho man wasn't very keen on the Hulkster getting close to Elizabeth. 
The 1988 Survivor Series was next. The Mega Powers captained a Survivor Series team that also featured Hercules, Coco Beware and Hillbilly Jim and they took on Akeem, the Big Boss Man, the Red Rooster, Haku and Ted DiBiase. If you want some further proof that the WWF was still centered around Hogan at this time, look no further than the 1988 Survivor Series entrances. Savage and Hogan were co-captains of their team, yet Hulk Hogan had his own separate entrance while his teammates, including the WWF WWF Champion Randy Savage all came out together. The Babyfaces won the match, but afterwards Hogan once again got very friendly with Miss Elizabeth and Savage's reaction wasn't so subtle this time. Hogan acted oblivious, but Randy was clearly pissed off. This was good stuff here, a nice slow build, a potential rivalry between two fan favourites, the eventual Savage vs Hogan match would have money written all over it. On the January 7th edition of Saturday Night's Main Event, airing a week before the 1989 Royal Rumble, Hulk Hogan took on Akeem. During this match, the big boss man and Slick would constantly interfere, leading to Miss Elizabeth running backstage to get Randy Savage for help. Randy, however, decided not to help Hogan, insisting that Hulk was fine on his own and he didn't need any assistance during the match. Eventually, the numbers game was too much for the Hulkster, and after giving Hogan a beating, the heel trio turned their attention to Miss Elizabeth. When the boss man tried to place handcuffs on Elizabeth, Savage ran to the ring to make the save. So it seemed like the Macho Man was in no rush to help Hogan, but he would still protect Elizabeth. In the Royal Rumble match the following week, Hogan eliminated Randy Savage by accident when the Hulkster tried to eliminate Bad News Brown. This, of course, would be another annoyance to the macho man Randy Savage. He didn't initially believe that Hogan's actions were accidental at all, but Miss Elizabeth was there to ensure cooler heads prevailed. It didn't last long, though. The official split of the Mega Powers happened on the main event, February 3rd, 1989. Hogan and Savage were scheduled to take on Akeem and the Big Boss Man. During the bout, Akeem threw Savage out of the ring, but Savage fell onto Elizabeth, knocking her out cold. Hogan saw what happened, he rushed out of the ring to check the damage, but the Hulkster was definitely more concerned with Elizabeth here. Hogan picked up Miss Elizabeth as Randy Savage looked on in disbelief, and he brought her to the back for medical attention. Savage was left to take on Akeem and the Big Boss Man. A little later on, Hogan returned to the ring and he called for a tag into the match, but Savage slapped Hogan in the face before walking away, leaving Hogan to take on Boss Man and Akeem. After Hogan won the match, he went to the back to check on Miss Elizabeth, and Randy Savage just had enough. He attacked Hogan in the first aid room as Elizabeth looked on. Before the attack, Savage said he was not the third wheel in the Mega Powers. He was the WWF Champion, so he was number one. Savage said Hogan was jealous because the Macho Man was the champion, and Savage also said that Hogan had lust in his eyes for Miss Elizabeth. When talking about this part of the angle, Hulk Hogan said, it was all a play on real life and it worked so well because Randy was the ultimate protector in real life. To take that into the WWE and turn it into entertainment, it was so perfect because it was real. Vince McMahon said, In reality, Randy was so incredibly jealous of anyone that would even say hello to Elizabeth. Dealing with that was not an easy thing to do, but in regards to the WWE, there was a real story here. A natural, real life story that would be easy to do because of the reality of the situation. And so it was time to cash in on the storyline. WrestleMania 5 would see the mega powers explode when Randy Savage defended his WWF Championship against Hulk Hogan in the main event. Fans wondered which side Elizabeth would be on. Would she stick with the Macho Man or would she jump over to join forces with Hogan? The March 11th episode of Saturday Night's main event would give us the answer. Elizabeth declared that she would remain neutral. She would not stand in either man's corner, something that further annoyed the Macho Man. Anyway, WrestleMania 5 was again held in Atlantic City. The show was billed as WrestleMania 5, the mega powers explode. The world had watched Savage and Hogan's story unfold for over a year. It's now time to put on a show. 
The WWF had crafted an excellent story here, one that ran deeper than the Andre vs Hogan angle from WrestleMania 3, so the pressure was on to deliver a memorable match. Miss Elizabeth ended up getting ejected from ringside, she tried to assist both men at different points during the match and the referee made the decision to send her to the back. Savage and Hogan were then able to have a fair one on one match, the audience made a lot of noise during the bout but we simply can't overlook the predictability of the match outcome either. Hogan of course got the win and I feel that the predictable outcome maybe hurt the WrestleMania 5 main event at the time. The WWF were smart enough to play off this predictability at WrestleMania 6, but you did always feel that Hogan was going to emerge victorious when the Mega Powers exploded at WrestleMania 5. Still, it was a good match here, probably the best on the card in terms of storytelling and crowd anticipation. One year prior, in the exact same arena, Hulk Hogan had helped Randy Savage capture the WWF Championship, and a year later, after their relationship had many ups and downs, Hulk Hogan reclaimed the title when he delivered the leg drop to his former storyline best friend. So did we now have a new main event superstar in Randy Savage? One who would be able to carry the company if Hulk Hogan decided to call it quits? Well, yes and no. Savage, in my opinion, was already capable of carrying the workload should Hogan be absent, but the WWF decided to keep Savage heel. He wasn't going to be the huge babyface that the company had built up over the past year or so. Instead, Randy would leave Miss Elizabeth while siding with Sensational Sherry, and the Macho King gimmick was born when Savage defeated Jim Duggan for the King of the Ring title in September of 1989. Savage also aligned himself with Zeus in the run up to the No Holds Barred movie getting its cinematic release, leading to a tag team match at SummerSlam 89 where Zeus and Savage took on Brutus Beefcake and Hulk Hogan, and again, the two teams squared off at the No Holds Barred pay per view in a steel cage match. Savage and Hogan also had a rematch on the February 23rd 1990 edition of the main event, and Hogan again got the victory. In the end though, Savage did eventually turn back into a good guy and Miss Elizabeth was used once again to sway the fans opinion of the macho man. After Savage turned babyface, the Mega Powers would team up three more times. The Mega Powers took on Jake the Snake Roberts and the Berserker on the February 1st 1992 edition of Superstars. This was a dark match but it was included in the unreleased Randy Savage DVD collection and it's also available right now on YouTube. Savage and Hogan also defeated Jake Roberts and The Undertaker on February 10th 1992 at a house show and the last time the Mega Powers teamed up during this era of the WWF was on March 29th 1992. The Mega Powers defeated Ric Flair and Sid Justice at a house show here. Of course, Hogan and Savage would team up down the road in WCW, both as good guys and also as part of the NWO, and Savage and Hogan's rocky relationship was the catalyst for the breakaway NWO Wolfpack faction, but we'll get to all of that in future Hogan uploads. So what was next for Hulk Hogan after WrestleMania 5? Well, Savage vs Hogan was the headlining match for many house shows throughout 1989. The WWF milked the feud for all it's worth and rightfully so. While the whole Mega Powers thing was going on though, there was another superstar that was making waves in the World Wrestling Federation. We've talked a lot about Savage and Hogan being the top two guys in the company during this time period, but a third guy was getting such huge ovations and fan support that he just couldn't be ignored. And this guy was coming after Hulk Hogan and the WWF Championship. Our next video in this Hulk Hogan series stops off at WrestleMania 6. The Ultimate Challenge, the WWF Champion Hulk Hogan faces the Intercontinental Champion, the Ultimate Warrior. I hope you enjoyed this look back at the Mega Powers and hopefully you can see why the rivalry and angle is so fondly remembered by today's wrestling fans. The story itself was the key ingredient here. I'm not going to say Hogan vs Savage at WrestleMania 5 is one of my favourite matches, because it isn't. I feel both guys have had better matches, but I still have an appreciation for the story that was crafted here. The Mega Powers falling apart forced fans to choose a side. It made us question if Randy Savage was really the bad guy in all of this, at least to begin with, and so the WWF played with fans emotions here to get people invested, and it worked a charm. Even though he was turned into a full time heel after all was said and done, Savage still had marquee matches. He had earned a prominent spot on the cards while Hogan remained as popular as ever, so it all worked out in the end. 
But anyway, thanks again for watching, and I hope you join me next time when we look at Warrior vs Hogan at WrestleMania 6. Hey dudes, this is Hulk Hogan, man. I want to thank you maniacs for watching the video right here on Wrestling Bios, dude. On us, the Mega Powers, dude. But no matter what you hear, man, I never went around touching Liz, dude. I would never do that to Randy. Plus, man, that would hurt my merch sales, Jack. Check me out hanging and banging every other month, dude, on the Hibiki TMD channel, man, on YouTube, dude. Check him out, too, at the Hibiki TMD, dude. And me, Hulk Hogan, at Hulk Hogan on Twitter, man. Thanks for hanging and banging, Jack.